Space Conference Center. Thank you so much for coming out on this grotty evening. And I was thinking a little bit about that and actually I couldn't think of anything I would rather do than come and listen to beautiful music, eat food that somebody else has prepared for me and feel completely smug and self-righteous about the fact that everything I'm doing is for a really good cause. Hearing the reports on the news of children who are so devastated um, that really they've become desensitized to the world that they live in. And the language that, that they use betrays this desensitization. These playgrounds are very often their only retreat into a world of hopefully a few, a few blessed moments of joy and laughter and carefree freedom and some kind of kaleidoscopic imagination where they can just enjoy a few moments of peace. We are honoring JC because he uh, traveled as a volunteer without being compensated to Lebanon, took time away from his family on Thanksgiving, and he went there um, with uh, an open heart, an open mind, and built these playgrounds for us. And we want to recognize that. Thank you. Thank you. Why this organization, Playgrounds for Palestine, is so vital for the children of, uh, of Palestine. Why does the United Nations feel that play is part of our human rights. Play translates and transcends conflict. Play is the perfect preparation for life. But what happens? What happens to children if they do not play? Play is not only for children. Play is for adults. When adults don't play, when adults become so overworked, they become grumpy, they become depressed, they become anxious. They begin to lose those neural connections. So play is vital throughout our entire life. What is the opposite of play? It's depression. I was chosen to MC, not because I'm good with words, not because I'm loud or bubbly, just because I'm shameless, really. And, it, and it, the reason why I need to be MCing because I'm shameless is that I'm gonna keep reminding you throughout the entire night of all the ways that you can make a difference for young children in Palestine by giving some money. This is the reality of, of the life that they live. At any given time, whether in the West Bank or Gaza, there are anywhere from 200 to 400 children who are in jail, who are picked up um, by Israeli soldiers. Children as young as six years old are languishing in Israeli jails. They, they're traumatized. Home demolitions, these scenes are, are quite common. And, and you see these kids going through uh, what remains of their lives, trying to pick out their belongings. Put this picture in here because it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it's very telling. I mean, this is what this kid is playing with. He's beating two rocks against each other. You can see um, having kids have to climb over walls through walls, they have to go through checkpoints, um, they have to wait at gates, sometimes they get in, sometimes they don't. Um, that's, the, that's an image of the wall, getting through that wall is uh, quite difficult, trying to <laughs> um, get through tanks. Um, these are two girls trying to climb through the walls to get to, to, get to school. This is what it's like to live under occupation, to be completely imprisoned and surrounded um, and, and harassed by a foreign military. And sometimes when you do get to school, your school has been closed and it's blocked off by the military. Um, these, are, these pictures also were in Hebron, taken of schoolgirls, rather, who were trying to get to their classes. They were not allowed, and in this ultimate act of defiance, they held class right outside of the checkpoint. And sometimes a lot of students never make, to, make it to class. Um, these are empty desks of children who have been shot. Um, and this is also quite common. Um, but you know, the kids, they, they are some of the most resilient creatures I have, I've ever met. It's, it's really humbling um, to see them. I mean, these, you know, this is an example of that. These two girls are trying to do their schoolwork and, and this, is, this is what remains of their lives is, is all behind them. Uh, this is another example of, of trying to get to school. And these are the games they play. This picture is, is also very telling. 
Um, as GC said, you know, children use play to make sense of the world that they live in. And, and this is what this young girl is trying to make sense of. This is what she is, um, this is what she knows. That's what her, that's what babies, that's what she's seen babies look like. Um, and when I was when I was young and in Jerusalem, what I do remember being very upset about was this shiny, beautiful playground um, that I could see, but I could not play on it because of who I was. Um, and and I do remember that, and that really was sort of um, the underlying impetus to to do playgrounds. So even though you may not understand the spoken word, May's voice and her very being, her singing, will, will take you through the story. She has been more than generous to the Palestinian cause. Her commitments runs deep. It's true that wherever we go, uh, it's, this is a cause that we should always be supporting as long as there is injustice in this world. I'm going to start with um, a song uh, by uh, the late beautiful singer Salwa Al Atrib, and it, it talks about giving, which is the theme of our evening. <laughs> I'm 